Signature move. First try commit. The first time that I had seen John skate, I went up to him like, like a fan. And he totally respected me right from the start. That was a big thing to John, was just living life to the fullest, going big, and just love and respect. JT would show up, and he had this certain aura about him. Everyone would get out of the way and watch him skate. You know, that's what he loved to do. He had fun, and a lot of people just had fun watching him. JT could have easily became a professional skater, easily. How the hell does this little guy with these short legs make his body look so big when he flips his board? Not trying to impress anyone, he just wanted to feel like he was flying. I started to get really into making movies, making our own skate videos, and my brother skateboarding, and you could like see in his eyes that things were changing. He wrote something one time about the figment of his imagination versus reality. He didn't know where, where the line was sometimes. And that illness of schizophrenia even invaded his dreams. He said, Mom, what if I get trapped in hell and the, the doors close forever and I can never get out? I don't know how to answer that. You know, one day it would be him and the next day it'd be different. And it's hard to even think about it. Seeing him as a person and, you know, how he just changed over time, that kind of affected me and knowing that somebody was just kind of like losing themselves and didn't know how to come back from it. I never believed that there was something wrong with him. His illness was a lot worse than mine. Mine is manageable, but his is, it's hard on everybody. I had so much respect for him, how he dealt with his illness, how he dealt with what was handed to him. And I, I know this sounds weird, but I, I respect him for even the fact that he took his life because that's what he chose. Even though he wasn't in the right frame of mind, I think he was just extremely tired, just trying to subside with all the static in his head. I've been able to move forward because I know that his story is one that needs to be told to help other people. Mike was diagnosed when he was age four and he was diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. He asked me one day, when do you think I'm going to die? How long do you think I'm going to live, you know? And I said, you're going to live day by day just like anybody else would. We don't have any guarantees, not us. I used to be able to do art and I could, I could draw pretty good. Now it's gotten so I can't draw, but I'm still into graphic design and I'm pretty proficient at that with my one good finger, two good fingers. I got a lot of uh, sarcasm and parody in my work. I try not to take anything too serious. If I didn't have Michael's illness to deal with, I didn't realize how strong I was. I said, I'm gonna try not to check out on you. You know, I'm gonna do my best to try to, we're gonna just try to work through this together, me and you. JT is one of the best people I've ever known. He'll always be a part of my life. And I love your family because they were my family. Your family like took us in. That alone inspired me to put my hand out and help someone else. I think we all have to deal with losses in our life. You know, Michael's had to lose a lot of things, and his brother John lost a lot of things with their illnesses. And uh, but they tried to shine above what they lost. We always had each other's backs, and we respected each other. And I think we may have helped each other along the way, accepting everything there is in life. I know I'm blessed, I feel blessed to be the mom to both of my sons.